an extract from the book The Age of Responsibility, CSR 2.0 and the New DNA of Business by Wayne Visser, read by the author. The Ages and Stages of CSR This book is an attempt at answering some of these awkward questions, taking a critical look at the role of business in the global crises we face, and being honest with myself and all those working in corporate sustainability and responsibility about the limits of our impacts. At the same time, it is an opportunity to glimpse into the future, to start to sketch out what a different kind of CSR, indeed a different kind of business, might look like, one that will have a greater chance of succeeding where its predecessor has failed. As intimated at the start of the chapter, I found it useful to view the evolution of business responsibility in terms of five overlapping periods, the ages of greed, philanthropy, marketing, management, and responsibility, each of which typically manifests a different stage of CSR, namely defensive, charitable, promotional, strategic, and systemic CSR. My contention is that companies tend to move through these ages and stages, although they may have activities in several ages and stages at once, and that we should be encouraging business to make the transition to systemic CSR in the dawning age of responsibility. If companies remain stuck in any of the first four stages, I don't believe we will turn the tide on the environmental, social and ethical crises that we face. Simply put, CSR will continue to fail. The first part of the book explores each of these ages in turn. However, let me introduce them here briefly. The age of greed is characterized by defensive CSR, in which all corporate sustainability and responsibility practices, which are typically limited, are undertaken only if and when it can be shown that shareholder value will be protected as a result. Hence, employee volunteer programs, which show evidence of improved staff motivation, commitment and productivity, are not uncommon, nor are targeted expenditures, for example on pollution controls, which are seen to fend off regulation or avoid fines and penalties. Charitable CSR in the age of philanthropy is where a company supports various social and environmental causes through donations and sponsorships, typically administered through a foundation, trust or chairman's fund, and aimed at empowering community groups or civil society organisations. Promotional CSR in the age of marketing is what happens when corporate sustainability and responsibility is seen mainly as a public relations opportunity to enhance the brand, image and reputation of the company. Promotional CSR may draw on the practices of charitable and strategic CSR and turn them into PR spin, which is often characterized as greenwash. Strategic CSR emerging from the age of management means relating CSR activities to the company's core business, like Coca-Cola's focus on water management. This is often through adherence to CSR codes and implementation of social and environmental management systems, which typically involve cycles of CSR policy development, goal and target setting, program implementation, auditing and reporting. Systemic CSR in the age of responsibility focuses its activities on identifying and tackling the root causes of our present unsustainability and irresponsibility, typically through innovating business models, revolutionizing their processes, products and services, and lobbying for progressive national and international policies. Hence, while strategic CSR is focused at the micro level, supporting social or environmental issues that happen to align with its strategy, but without necessarily changing that strategy, systemic CSR focuses on understanding the interconnections of the macro level system, the society and ecosystems, and changing its strategy to optimize the outcomes for this larger human and ecological system. The second part of the book focuses on how we might do that, exploring systemic CSR, which I also refer to as CSR 2.0, and delving into each of the five principles that characterize this new approach, 
namely creativity, scalability, responsiveness, glocality, and circularity. The final section of the book looks at how we can make change happen at a societal, organizational, and individual level, ending with how we can all make a difference in our own unique way. We begin our examination in the wake of the global financial crisis by looking at the age of greed that precipitated the near meltdown of the world's economic system.